Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am the Scared Sheep, and in this video, we will be continuing the Japanese mockumentary series Hoso Kinshi with episode 2. If you missed the first episode, go check it out now so that you can get an idea of what the series is about, and then come back here to check out the second episode. In episode 2, titled The Cursed Family, we follow a large family of mom, dad, and seven children to see what life is like for them in a country where the average household has only one or two kids. But of course, since this is Hoso Kinshi, we know that there is going to be something going on other than just what is presented to us. There is a movie that follows this family after the events of the episode, but in this video, we'll just be covering what happens in episode 2. Trigger warning to anyone sensitive to domestic violence or child abuse, this episode does feature a few instances of it. But just as a reminder, this series is a complete work of fiction and no one is ever actually harmed. Now, let's jump into the episode and see if you can spot the truth. Episode 2 opens to the Ura family in their garden doing Radio Taiso, a common exercise broadcasted in Japan that first started in 1928 and is still done in schools, homes, and public parks today, usually early in the morning. After exercising, the family gets ready for breakfast before the children head to school. The two oldest daughters, Ringo and Mikan, always wake up early to help their mother prepare breakfast and lunches for the day. While helping to dish the food out to the family, Mikan mentions that they also prepare a separate beef dish just for their father because he likes it so much. This is a bit unusual, as typically beef is not eaten at breakfast in Japan. Once they all sit down for breakfast, the show introduces each child around the table. 18-year-old Ringo, 17-year-old Mikan, 16-year-old Goki, 9-year-old Rie, 11-year-old Ryuta, 6-year-old Ramon, 5-year-old Don. The show introduces the last member of the family, their cat Enrique. The father is especially fond of Enrique and always shares his meals with him. Breakfast continues with the father going on to talk about an accident he had two years ago when he fell off a ladder while working as a carpenter. He ended up in hospital with a badly injured leg and has been out of work since. The family has been getting by on income from the mother's part-time job. At around 8 o'clock, the six older children then leave for school and the mother to her part-time job. leaving the father at home with Enrique and Dan, whom he will later take to kindergarten. Later that afternoon, we see some of the children have returned home from school, and five-year-old Dan is crying in the bedroom saying, it hurts, it hurts. His father brings over the first aid kit, and we can see that Dan is bleeding from a cut on his temple. The cameraman asks Dan what happened, but the father answers for him, saying that Don wasn't watching where he was going and on the way home from kindergarten, tripped and fell. For a moment, we can see that six-year-old Remen has been busy drawing while all of this has been going on. It's now 6.30 p.m. and the family is sitting down to dinner. The family comments that Don seems to not be feeling quite himself and when asked how his head is, he meekly responds that it hurts. The narrator mentions that Don is not alone, and recently several of the children have been suffering from unexplained injuries. Even the father often gets sick and falls asleep unexpectedly. The worst incident, though, has been the death of their nine-year-old son, Takaharu. We see that the parents spend time every day after dinner at the family's household altar, 
honoring their son who drowned last summer in the nearby river. Just after midnight, we see all the children asleep, except for Ringo. Being a third-year high school student, it's not unusual for someone her age to still be awake at this time, doing homework and studying for university entrance exams. But she adds that in such a busy household, it's the only quiet time she gets. と本当に家計が苦しいんで、お父さんも仕事してないし、だから今のところは国立大学を目指して勉強してます。実はリンゴさん、学年でもトップレベルの成績であり、国立大学も夢ではないと、担任の先生も太鼓判を押すほどの
わかんないよなんでねえ大丈夫Rie is rushed to a nearby hospital where thankfully the doctors say her injuries are not a big deal and she is able to return home that same evening. Sitting with the father in front of the camera, the mother again wonders if it isn't because of that photo we were shown earlier. The father, on the other hand, calls the idea stupid and doesn't believe in such a thing. Later that night, the father rips up the photograph and throws it away. Four days later, we see Demon and Dan drawing pictures scattered around the floor. ダンコは何描いてるの？お化けの絵。あれ、その写真ってどうしたの？え、道路から拾った。お家の前に拾ったの。After seeing that the photo has once again returned, the mother hires a psychic who pays a visit to the house. She says that she feels a strong presence coming from the picture and recommends performing a ritual to exercise the energy, or else something bad could happen to the family. The mother sits down with the father once again to discuss the psychic performing a ritual on the photograph. At first, he listens to what she has to say, but becomes angry and storms off at the mention of Takaharu. Three days later, the psychic returns to perform the ritual. We can see that everyone except for the father has joined. The ritual takes about three hours. And at the end, the psychic burns the photograph. She says she believes the evil spirit has left. But since the father was not there, she's worried and still wants the family to be careful. The following week, the camera crew returns to find the family still going about their usual routine. さん、もう雲牛肉食べたい。はい。ダメ。え、なんで。子供に朝から牛肉なんか。だ、こうやって。はい。パパね、病気だからね、体力つけないとね。だ。じゃ、大きくなってからね、食べなさい。
One month later, the film crew returns to visit the family once again, as they begin their day with the usual morning stretches. But this time, they find the mother leading the exercise. It turns out that shortly after their last visit, the father went missing and has not been heard from since. There is a very happy atmosphere in the household now, different from before, and we can see everyone is smiling and enjoying their morning exercise. As the film crew heads into the children's bedroom, we can still hear the laughter of the mother and her kids in the garden. The camera focuses on the floor, and we see more of Reman and Dan's colorful drawings scattered all around. Outside once more, the camera stops to show that a little grave marker has been lovingly made for the family pet Enrique. So, is this the story of a cursed family and a photograph that can cause accidents, injuries, disappearances, and even death? The truth is, the picture has nothing to do with anything that has been happening. As you may have already guessed, the father is a violent man who actually hates his children. In fact, the only one in his family that he seems to like is Enrique the cat. The father has been behind all of the children's injuries, from hitting Don on their way home from kindergarten, to pushing Rie down the stairs, to throwing Takaharu into the river, which is how he drowned. To no one's surprise, the mother hates her husband, and is the one who knocked the ladder, causing him to fall and injure his leg two years ago. It was during his time in hospital that the family came up with their plan to get rid of the father once and for all. Through Ringo's studying, they decided to use arsenic to gradually weaken him. This is why he had a special separate menu during breakfast each morning. We even see Ringo adding a suspicious looking white powder to his beef on the same morning that Don asked to have a bite. This also suggests that Don was the only member of the family who was not aware of the plan. Once they felt that the father was sufficiently weakened, just meet Goki would finish him off with his baseball bat. Unfortunately, this meant that poor Enrique the cat was collateral damage, as they couldn't have him around to potentially be tested for the arsenic. It's pretty safe to assume that both the father and Enrique are buried together in the garden next to the cat's grave marker. The majority of this story is pretty much spelled out for us in Lemon and Don's drawings. While the pictures themselves are pretty damning, when you put them together with the film footage we saw, the mystery really does wrap itself up quite nicely. On a cute little aside about the children, they all have a fun theme to their names. The girls are all named after fruit. Ringo is apple, Mikan is tangerine, Rie is pear, and Ramon is, well, lemon. The boys, on the other hand, are a lot less obvious, but some Japanese review websites suggest that they are all named after Street Fighter characters. Other than having played it occasionally as a kid, I'm not very familiar with Street Fighter, so if you are, let me know whether you agree or not in the comments. And that's it for Hoso Kenshi episode 2. This is actually my favorite episode of the series, so I'd love to hear what you guys liked too. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps out my channel a lot. Thank you so much to everyone for watching this video till the end, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.